And it's been called a revolution in technology that can miraculously, and that really is the word, miraculously replace some body parts in the process, saving the lives of patients. We're talking about 3D printing of body parts. And before we get to our discussion on how it's now working in India, here's the story of a woman who suffered a debilitating collapse of her neck vertebra due to TB until doctors at Medanta, the Medicity in Gurgaon, used India's first 3D printed titanium implant. Has it worked? Pallav Bagla has the story. Just one month back, walking was just impossible for this 32-year-old dancer and singer. Her neck was collapsing after a severe infection of bone TB. But now, a new lease of life. Abhi, now better. But last May, I had so many problems that I couldn't walk in the night. I had so many pain in the night that I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything. But now, I feel very good. 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 With few options available to them, the doctors decided to use the latest advance in medical science. They designed a custom-made ultra-modern 3D printed titanium implant to replace the two affected vertebrae in a neck. This was being done for the first time in our country and uh, probably third in the world. Using x-rays, a computer model was generated and then printed as a titanium implant. But not everyone is convinced about the merits of the breakthrough. According to Dr. Ravi Mittal, an orthopedic surgeon at Ames, it seems a usual situation has been termed unusual and a custom-made implant has been used. What you see are titanium screws used on a replica of a 3D imprinted titanium implant which has been used on a patient for the first time in India. Personalized medicine in orthopedics for the very first time in India with camera person Manoj Thakur in Gurugram, Pallav Bagla for NDTV. Well, this certainly is a revolution. It's been spoken about uh, in many parts of the world, and now it's a reality in India. Just what is the future of 3D uh, printing as far as medical applications are concerned? Dr. Naresh Trehan, the founder chairman of Medanta with us. Thanks so very much for being with us. And Dr. Anand Naik, the senior consultant uh, of spinal surgery at Medanta. You actually did that surgery. It was 10 hours uh, long approximately. And you were actually showing me before uh, the program started, and I, I mean, you could just lift it up. That is uh, the vertebrae that, that's been replaced, right? So uh, this, you've got a titanium implant which looks exactly like this, right? Yes, exactly like this. And where was it made? Uh, this was made uh, with one of the manufacturers uh, using the 3D printing technology. So this is the exact replica of the titanium implant which has been used. So just a basic question, since we're trying to understand this, how do you know what uh, the vertebrae in the patient looks like? Uh, we do basic uh, x-rays. You have to get it exact, right? Yeah, you have to get it exact. So you do basic x-rays and CT scans, uh, the high resolution CT scans with uh, around 0.6 to 1 mm cuts would be sufficient. And then we uh, recreate that uh, spine model in our computer software. And then uh, we design. Doctor, can you just pause that? Me carry on, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So we design uh, the spine in uh, such a way, we, we, we do the exact replication of the patient's uh, whole spine. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this particular case, uh, this is the exact uh, replica of the patient's spine. Mm -hmm. uh, the C1 vertebra has been removed but, uh, because it's uh, very difficult to put it without any supporting ligaments or supporting structures. And as you can see that the C2 vertebral body, it's all uh, looks like moth eaten appearance and it's all destroyed. And this part is C3, the thin flake of bone. Yes. The normal height should have been like this. Yes. And you can see another destruction at another vertebra over there. So because of all this collapse, from the normal uh, looking spine, which should be like this, it has gone to this. So right. instead of having a curvature, she was sliding forward. And because of the collapse, it was causing compression on the spinal cord, and which was subsequently causing all her weaknesses in her limbs, all four limbs and also uh, respiratory uh, okay. palsy. Sir, what is the future of this? Uh, so, you know, we have been the talking about the new frontiers that will come to the aid of medicine as we see it today. And certainly, 3D printer technology has opened up a whole new vista. So here we are, we are looking at several applications for it. What Dr. Nayak just showed you is a, a life-saving because the whole vertebra collapsed, the column collapsed, 
compressed her. Uh, so she was just getting weak progressively for three weeks. She couldn't even move out of bed. Hmm. And here she is walking four days later. So that it's an amazing thing to happen and a great tool in our hands to be able to recreate these situations. Where does the so printer exist? The printer exists in Bareilly, I believe, right? Yeah. Are so you going are, to be acquiring so something like that? Yes, or? We, you see, there are industrial printers and there are, there are now modulating hmm. like uh, f for, uh, f for polyethylene printers. So for us as, as practitioners, like we now, you know, for cancer of the, of the mouth and jaw, you remove half the jaw and then you have to wait to reconstruct it and all that, you can actually image it like uh, with, with CT scans and MRIs and all that, you get the mod model made on a 3D printer, send it to the to manufacturer, they on their 3D printer will make the, like this is titanium, titanium or they can use other synthetic material so that when you do the surgery, which is quite extensive, then you have to remove half the jaw and it's quite How mutilating. expensive is it? The whole thing, it costs. I mean, it obviously right would now, vary from surgery to surgery, no, but generally speaking. In the initial stages, it is expensive in the sense one titanium is expensive and then because it's limited technology, it, it will cost, this one cost uh, how much to, to the patient? Uh, roughly around 60 to 65,000 rupees yeah, to the so patient. So for the jaw, we have, it costs about 75,000 because it's much bigger. So then you have like ear, you know, injuries to the ear, injuries to the bone where long segments of bone are missing. So all this opens up that whole possibilities. And just patients. one brief question, we're running out of time. What about soft tissues? Is that possible? Soft Can tissues? we have a, a heart in the future? Which is yes, yes, of course. So what, but that's a different technology. The 3D printing can give you a scaffold. On top of that, you grow stem cells. Right. And that's what's happening today is that the experimental in the lab have gone quite, quite advanced now. And we are talking about being able to create the artificial organs I think we are still a few years away, okay. but the technology has converged to a level where the possibilities are huge. So if right. we can do it here in, uh, at, at our institution, you can know that this is now a progressive event which will just keep going further and further. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing some of that information with us. It is absolutely a revolution. And let's see what the road ahead is. Thank you and congratulations on that successful surgery. Thank you so much. We're completely out of time uh, on this program. Thanks very much for being with us. Goodbye.